Today I want to continue looking at a CDM 570L modem from Comtech EF Data. I want to look at the options on this modem. So to do that, we go to Utilities. Utilities have something called FAST. FAST is the type of option that you can buy from Comtech EF Data if it's not on there already. They'll charge you and send you a code. With the code you can install it directly. There are other options such as the Ethernet card, which in fact is on this modem, that has to be put in at the factory or it has to be purchased from the factory and then put in. It's a hardware option in other words. Anyway, let's look at some of the fast options on here. I'm going over to view. And in view, it will go through 1 to 20 for all of the options that are installed or not installed. The first thing we see on this modem is the 150 watt but power supply is not installed. That would typically be for one of the higher power bucks, perhaps a 10 watt, uh, perhaps a little higher than that. In this particular case, the power supply is a 100 watt and suitable for 3 to 5 watt bucks. Okay, so that's installed. Let's look at the next option. Read Solomon? No. Turbo code? Yes. Turbo code LDPC? No. IP mod? Yes. Hardware expansion not installed, 2 not installed, 2048 not installed, and the reason for that is that this is a 5 meg modem, so 5 meg is installed. APSK? No. 16 qualm? No. 10 meg? No. Hardware compression? This is part of the Ethernet option and it's very important if you want to run full Ethernet with this to get hardware compression and data compression. That's option number 15. IPQoS, yes. 3 times DES, yes. This is an encryption protocol uh, typically used with Vipersat. Vipersat is installed. 19 VFS and G703 is not, neither of those are installed. G703 interface is installed. And now we're back to number one again. Although the front panel is a very convenient way of testing and looking at the modem, there's another way that's even better. That's by using the laptop computer that I've got here, going directly in over the serial port. And we can control all of the aspects there and even some things that we cannot do on the front panel, such as changing the password. This laptop computer is quite the oldest thing we've got in this shop, but we keep it around for one very good reason. It's still running Windows XP and it has a program called Hyperterm. Hyperterm is ideal for communicating directly with these modems. Normally I would use the serial port on this laptop. One of our engineers got to it and he said, mm, sorry, but I blew it out. So now we have a USB to serial connector. It works fine. This is just a simple three wire connector. Goes into the console port on the modem. Now I'm going to turn on the laptop and bring up the program that we use called Hyperterm. This is what the output looks like on the Hyperterm program. Initially, it's just going to go through the startup procedure. It takes slightly over one minute. I'm letting it run just so you can get a good idea of what is shown and what a normal startup looks like. After that, I'm going to check and see if the buck power supply is turned on. And if it isn't, we're going to turn it off because after this video, the next video will be setting up a carrier on the spectrum analyzer. And as you know from the previous video, we must have the 24 volt buck power supply turned off, otherwise we'll damage the spectrum analyzer. Now it's going ahead with the startup, and it's going through the boot at the moment, looking for failures. There are no failures, so this is fine. Now we're going to go to the next stage. Now it's completed the initial test. Any key will bring you up to the main menu. The main menu, we're going to go to M, configuration, C, configuration again, and now B because we want to see the buck power supply. 
In this particular case, the buck su power supply is already off. Buck DC power is disabled, so we're safe to move ahead. You can see it at the highlight. Had it been on, pressing the W would have turned it off. Now we're going to look to see whether the modem is in Vibersat mode or in basically single user mode. Hitting the X key always takes you back one level. So now we're back to the main menu. We go to administration. And then we want to look at the working mode. The working mode now is shown point to point, which is perfect. It's asking me if I want to change it. I don't, so I just say no. Once more, X takes me back to the main menu. And now I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the features on this modem. In this case, we're going to hit F for features. And we're going to see very much the same sort of thing we found uh, when we looked at the other menu on the front panel. Uh, just about everything is enabled that requires Vipersat to operate. In other words, it's got the Ethernet card, uh, Telnet, all of the Ethernet facilities that would be used by Vipersat. Going back a step, now we go to modem configuration. On this screen we have something called information, I, and again this is just a summary of the steps that we had to go through 1 to 21 to find out what is in here. And it's got a nice summary here. It's a lot quicker than having to go the other way, you know, step by step on the front menu. That concludes looking at the features on this modem using Hyperterm. In the next video, I'm going to use Hyperterm to generate a carrier that we can see on the spectrum analyzer just to ensure that the modem does accurately put out the frequency and the modulation that we request.